Welcome to the Globe Theatre, located in Foggio, London, in the lovely country of Great Britain, also known as England. The Globe Theatre, right on the historic River Thames in London, has housed some of the greatest plays of all time, written by the one and only William Shakespeare. And the story before us is no exception. The tale of As You Like It by William Shakespeare involves disguises, banishment, plenty of tomfoolery thanks to Touchstone, the court jester, plenty of betrayal and backstabbery, and my favourite part, all of the lovely romance and star-crossed lovers uniting in wedded bliss, and I, the lovely, scrumptious, radiant, undeniably beautiful god of marriage, will be your guide to my side of the story. We open our tale in the English court with two cousins, Rosalind and Celia. Rosalind is the daughter of the Duke. Well, up until recently she was. Her father, Duke Senior, was usurped. That means he got the boot by his brother, Duke Frederick, and is now banished into the Forest of Arden. This means that Celia, Rosalind's cousin, is the daughter of the current Duke. Basically, the court is in shambles, being held together by duct tape and tyranny. But we'll come back to that. I'll let you in on a little secret. Rosalind is going to fall in love with this lovely young man, pacing around looking so troubled. The fun part is seeing how it's all going to happen. This is Orlando, the son of another noble family. Say hi, Orlando. Hi. Never mind, he can't hear me. <laughs> anyway, what's he on about? Adam, for my part, he keeps me rustically at home, or, to speak more properly, stays me here at home unkept. For call you that keeping for a gentleman of my birth, that differs not from the stalling of an ox. His horses are bred better. That is awful, sir. And my own nobility is completely cast aside now that our father is gone. It is completely unfair. And I'm going to tell him about it. Oh, I am right behind you, sir. Oh. Oh, oh, where's my cane? Oh. I pray thee, sweet cuz, be merry. Dear Celia, how could I be merry when my father has just been banished? Roz, listen, if the roles were reversed and my father, Duke Frederick, was banished, I'd learn to love your father, Duke Senior, as my own father, because that's how much you mean to me. That's what friends, no, what sisters are for. So, my sweet cousin, please, cheereth upeth. Seals, you always know what to say to make me feel better. Let's get our minds off of this and playeth a little game. Let me see. What think you of falling in love? Oh, right, yeah. Go ahead, but don't fall in love for real. It's always so messy at the end. Love ruins everythingeth. All right, ladies. What are we fussing about now? Oh, so what do we have here? Though nature hath given us wit to flout at fortune, hath not fortune sent in this fool to cut off the argument? <laughs> <laughs> Sick burn! Nice one, cuz! Why do I even bother? All right, Lady Celia, I am sent to inform you that your father is asking for you at the wrestling match out in the courtyard. And you might like this. A strong young man is faced to match against the famed unbeatable wrestler Charles. Sounds pretty exciting. A little rib breaking and whatnot. I guess that might be amusing. Let's check it out. Before the match begins, let's look behind the scenes where Charles is preparing to fight. Oh, and remember Orlando's awful brother Oliver. He's there too. Say, Sir Wrestler, I hear you want to wrestle before the new Duke later on, correct? <clears throat> it's Charles to you, man. And yeah, I hear I'm set to wrestle your brother, though he is said to be arriving in disguise. He seems like a good guy, that Orlando fellow, and I don't want to hurt him. <laughs> well, funny you should say that, because actually my brother is the worst person I have ever had the misfortune to be around. Oh. <laughs> yeah? Oliver continues to tell Charles more lies about his brother Orlando. Gross. To get Charles to hurt him during the match. Uh, he probably doesn't wash his hands either. And Charles believes him. And 
there he goes with a vengeance ready to take Orlando down. But do not fret. This meeting will not result in a broken neck, but in the stealing of hearts between Rosalind and Orlando. And guess who's coming to cheer on the challenger? How now? Daughter and cousin, are you crept hither to see the wrestling? <clears throat> Young man, you must forfeit this fight. Your opponent is enormous, and you should see some of his challengers. They all went out on stretchers with a broken rib, at least. I, for one... Young man, please don't fight. But if you must, I wish that all the strength that I have were with you. Prove me wrong, good sir. And take my strength too, young sir, to win out her strength. Roz, what are you doing? He was cute. I was trying to flirt with him. I couldn't help it, Seals. There was just something about him. The bell rings, and the match begins! Oh, Charles uses his strength and size to overpower Orlando. But oh, Orlando evades it with his speed. Oh, 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 and Orlando gets a few punches into the abdomen. Oh, wait, now he's jumped onto Charles' back. Oh, Charles throws him off. Oh, but Orlando's back up and throwing punches. Charles is slowing down. Could he? No. Mighty! He has Orlando is crowned no. Charles under the ring! And he's down! He's down! Yeah. Orlando wins! Yeah. Yes! How surprising. What is your name, sir? My name is Orlando, son of Sir Roland Du Bois. Sir Roland? <laughs> While some thought Sir Roland was honorable, he was my enemy all the same. This win would be much more pleasing if you were from a different house. Nonetheless, congratulations! Rosalind and Celia rush over to congratulate the victor, Rolando. Rosalind explains how her father, Duke Senior, loved his father, Sir Roland. To show her affection, Rosalind asks Orlando to wear her necklace. Wear this for me. As a token of my admiration for your victory. If only I could congratulate you more. Shall we go, cuz? Can I not say I thank you? As Rosalind and Celia gush over Orlando, and Celia agrees that Rosalind can have him to pursue, Duke Frederick enters unannounced to banish Rosalind to join her father outside of the court to ensure she will never rise up against his dukedom in revenge. Within these ten days, if that thou beest found so near our public court as twenty miles, thou diest for it. You are your father's daughter and cannot be trusted. Yet your mistrust cannot make me a traitor. Father, hear me speak. You were the one who allowed her to stay in the first place. Well, if she is a traitor, then so am I. She is too subtle for you, daughter. I will hear no more of this. She is banished. <gasps> <laughs> And so Rosalind and Celia leave together into banishment, with Touchstone as a travel companion into the forest of Arden, where Rosalind will try to find her father, Duke Senior. Meanwhile, Orlando finds out that Duke Frederick has plans to capture him, but he escapes with Adam as his ward before any arrests can be made. And now we are in the forest of Arden, full of life, nature, and mystery. And hopefully... Rosalind's father. To avoid being recognised by the wrong sort, Rosalind is now disguised as a bloke called Ganymede, and Celia is concealing her princesshood with a farm girl disguise and goes by the name Aliena. The banished trio have been walking for hours and can barely go on any further. Oh, my feet! Let's rest. How much longer do we have to go? I'm exhausted. You're telling me? Get off. Wait, who goes there? <gasps> hide, everyone, hide. Phoebe, <laughs> wait. Nobody understands me in this provincial town. My love for you exceeds the heat of a thousand suns. Oh, Phoebe, Phoebe. Please love me, Phoebe. Oh, that poor farm boy. Hearing him pour out sighs of heartbreak. Oh, it really reminds me of my own feelings for that young man back in court. 
Same. I remember my girl from way back when. She was a simple milkmaid, and I fought off hundreds of other guys for her love. And I made her some earrings out of beans and gave them to her so she would give me a chance. La la la, la la la. La 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 la. Love is weird, man. Um, let's keep going. It's getting dark. And I, I saw a cottage on that hill over there. Maybe they'll let us stay the night. Tusson? Where'd he go? Meanwhile, let's check in on Duke Senior for a second. He must be miserable at this point in his banishment. Right? Oh, what a beautiful morning! Now, my co-mates and brothers in exile, are not these woods freer from peril than the envious court? Hey, senior, it's like 5 a.m., man. I know you miss making proclamations in the court, but go tell it to a squirrel or something. I, for one, need to sleep for at least 99 more hours. Jayquees, my dear sir, this, our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. Stay where you are. Give me all that you have. I am stronger than I look, so don't try anything. Sir, take what you need. Nay, come sit with us. No need to fight for your supper. We are all friends here. Wow. Well, thank you then. I was not expecting you guys to be so nice. It's just that my ward has exhausted his strength in his old age, traversing in the forest all night, and he needs help. Bring him here. You are both welcome at our table. Oh, how sweet is that? Well, while the Forest of Arden is full of brotherhood and generosity, back in the court, however... You must find Orlando. He cannot get away, dead or alive, Oliver. Can you handle that? We will seize your lands until you find him, so don't come back unless you have your brother in handcuffs. I never loved my brother in my life. I will take care of it. Hang there, my verse, in witness of my love. O oh, Rosalind, these trees shall be my books, and in their barks my thoughts all character. Run, run, Orlando, carve on every tree the fair, the chaste, and unexpressive she. What are these? From the east to western end, no jewel is like Rosalind. Let no fair be kept in mine, but the fair of Rosalind? My name is in these, that's weird. Who would write this? I think I know a certain strong young man who happens to wear your necklace, who wrestled in the court, long black hair. I thought he was cute till you swooped in and stole him, which I'm fine with. I've come to terms with it. Anyway, he's a cute guy. Ring any bells? Um... Orlando! It's Orlando! I saw him earlier gallivanting through that patch of trees over there with a stack of poems just like that one. Oh my god! How do I look? Wait! What should I do with my disguise? Uh, how was he when you saw him? What did he say? Did he ask about me? Whoa, whoa, cousin! Relax, one at a time. Okay, so, he was dressed like a hunter. Wait, isn't that him right there? Thanks for chaperoning me, sir, but I'm fine the rest of the way. I was fine the entire way, too, but whatever. You were the one following me, sir. How about I stay and you go? I'd rather walk the rest alone if it pleaseth you. Fine by me, sir. Seals, I'm gonna go talk to him, but like some saucy farm boy so he won't know it's me. Watch this. <clears throat> what is up, my man? Right! <laughs> Have you seen these poems stacked to these trees around here? I'd like to meet the sad, silly author of these limericks and try to help him escape this insanity of love. Wait, I am him. He is me. I wrote those. Please help me. I am so lovesick. It hurts. Hmm, I know the look of a lovesick person and you don't really match the description. A sullen cheek, bags under the eyes, a pale complexion, an ill temper, a five o'clock shadow, and you have none of these. You look perfectly healthy, in fact. What can I do to make you believe that I am in love? 
Ganymede, who is Rosalind in disguise, tells Orlando that she will cure him of his love sickness if he pretends that she is the Rosalind in his poems and will come every day to woo her. And Orlando agrees. Meanwhile, let's check in on... Wait a minute. Where'd Touchstone go? Come on, Audrey. Haven't I won you over already with my manly features and boyish attitude? Oh, goddess of my life. Let's get married right here, right now. Dear God, what manly features. You've got an attitude for sure, though. I can tell you that. Let us be wed then, Audrey. I've got a minister ready and everything. And while you may not appreciate my genius, poetical mind, I can teach you the ways of the aristocrats in our years together to come. Okay. <laughs> um, listen, I... I don't mean to interrupt, but do you really want to be married in a literal shrub? After speaking so much of a poetical future, don't you want a wedding that speaks to that? Hmm. My sweet Audrey, well, I wanted us to be married from the moment I saw you. I, I guess we should wait till we aren't standing in a shrubbery for our nuptials. Fine by me. He didn't show up. Didn't you hear him swear he'd be here at this exact hour? Oh, he hates me. Oh, he's just another guy. And a liar, too. Just forget about him. He's no good for you, obviously, since he can't even fulfill a fake date. But if he shows his face around here, I'll throw up fisticuffs. Watch me. Wait, what's that sound? <laughs> Sweet Phoebe, please accept my love. I will die of heartbreak. I'll do anything. Don't make me guilty of your cause of death. How is it that you expect me to love you when you say I can kill your heart with a single look? I'm trying to avoid your gaze so I won't hurt you. Uh, uh, um, excuse me, but who are you to reject this hopeless romantic? He deserves far better than the likes of you. Some disheveled, stuck-up maid with no other prospects around here asking for her affections. What is she looking at me for? Oh, no, no! Don't come after me now! I'm not interested, and I'm definitely not a good match for you, believe me! Hey, man, you deserve much better than her. Don't make a fool out of yourself. She's not even that cute. Listen up, lady. You ought to be grateful for this man. He is a good guy. And like I said, I don't see anyone else lined up for your dance card. So get on with it, you two. Ganymede, out! What just happened? Now I know, Shepard, what you mean by love at first sight. That boy has my heart. But we can still be friends, Sylvius. Phoebe, I don't care what he says. I still want you. Shepard, I am offering you my acquaintanceship. Isn't that enough? I am a person with my own ideas for who I want to love. That boy berated me, yet I found it pleasing to my ear. I really do have more cause to hate him than to love him, yet everything wrong about him is right in my eyes. I must find him. <laughs> Rosalind and Celia find their way into a clearing on their way home, when all of a sudden, who is this coming out of the brush? Good morrow, good sir, and fair lady, are you the one that lives in the cottage with the olive trees? I came bearing news from Orlando to a fellow who he refers to as Rosalind. <clears throat> uh, yes, gentle sir, tis I that to whom he refers, and this is my sister. Uh, what news do you bear? First... I must admit who I am. I am the brother of Orlando. My name is Oliver. You see, I was an awful older brother to him and thought we would never have kind words between us ever again. So, as I was sent from the court into the forest to find him, I came upon a sleeping lion who awoke and was about to attack me. Then, out of nowhere, came my brother Orlando to slay the lion and save my life. The lion swiped at his arm, but Orlando was able to fight back. That is why I carry this bloody bandage. Even though I treated him poorly his whole life, he saved me. I have had a complete change of heart. Oh, cuz, brother, wake up, wake up! Is he all right? 
Did I pass out? Fear not, gentle sir. He is still alive. His wound is being mended as we speak. Sir, will you accompany us back to the cottage? My brother may need to rest, and I cannot carry him alone. Certainly, miss. What a whirlwind day for Rosalind! First she helps a poor shepherd find his standards, then her guilt begins to weigh heavily on her for thinking poorly of Orlando for not coming to woo her on time. With Orlando's arm healing from the lion attack, let's see what happens next, shall we? Poor Orlando. It pains me to see your arm so hurt. Yes, it is painful, but not as much pain as I feel in my heart. Your sister and my brother are about to be married tomorrow. I am happy for him, but it is difficult to look into happiness through another man's eyes. Am I no longer enough for you? <clears throat> I, I can't be a Rosalind. I can't pretend anymore. Then let us talk no more of it. You seem to truly love Rosalind. So if you mean what you show, then tomorrow when Celia and Oliver are to be married, there will you and Rosalind be married too. Do you mean it? <laughs> I'm getting married tomorrow. I'm so joyful I could float away. Young man, there you are. <laughs> oh no, not you again. Oh, listen, you have a faithful shepherd right behind you. Love him. Forget about me. Oh, what is going on right now? But I am in love with you! Shepard, tell this youth what it means to be in love. To be in love, she made up of sighs and tears, of faith and service, passion and adoration and humility. And so am I for Phoebe. And I for Ganymede. And I for Rosalind. And I for no woman! All right, enough. Listen up. Every one of you will show up to the wedding tomorrow. Phoebe, tomorrow I will marry you if I ever marry a woman. But if you should refuse me at the wedding tomorrow, will you be willing to marry Silvius, who adores you? And Orlando, as you love Rosalind, you shall be married tomorrow, as she will be there waiting for you. <clears throat> you have your instructions, people. So until tomorrow, go on your ways. Ah, oh, the wedding, finally! Oh, it's so beautiful! And not just one wedding, but four weddings! My heart just might explode! Let's watch! Hi! We heard there's a wedding today, so we're just gonna add our names onto the docket, if that's cool. <laughs> oh, I can't wait any longer to be together, my sweet Stony. <laughs> that's my future wife, people. Okay, everyone, just be patient a little while longer. Sir Duke, the father of Rosalind, correct? You say that if your daughter Rosalind presents herself here, you will provide your blessing for her and Orlando's marriage? Aye, that I will. And I would give them entire kingdoms and more if I could. Especially after learning that Orlando is the son of Sir Roland, who was my closest confidant and friend when I was in the court. And Phoebe, we are agreed that if you refuse me today at the altar, you will marry Silvius. That's the deal, yes. But what of it? I am dying to marry you, my sweet. Okay, everyone talk amongst yourselves. We'll go get Rosalind. There's something about that farm boy that reminds me of my daughter. That's exactly what I thought when I first saw him. What is the holdup, y'all? I have been ready for months to marry this fine woman. Is she not the most stunning goddess fell to earth that you have ever seen? Okay, wait, stop looking. Don't get any ideas. Well, Sir Jester, I know we'd all love to hear you go on, but here they come. If there be truth in sight, you are my daughter. If there be truth in sight, you are my Rosalind. If sight and shape be true, why then my love adieu. I won't go back on my promise. Finally! My time to show! Peace, everyone! I must make everything clear of these most strange events. Here you eight that must take hands to join in the god of marriage's bands if truth holds true contents. 
you and you, no cross shall part. You and you are heart in heart. You to his love must accord, or have a woman to your lord. You and you are sure together as the winter to foul weather. And he is most fervent of all. Tis truth that Duke Frederick has fled the court to join a religious movement. So the court is to be inherited by you, the rightful Duke Senior. If this be true, then listen all you lords and friends that have endured harsh winters and long nights in the forest of Arden with me. This potent dukedom is now restored, and you are all welcome into my court. We'll so begin these rites, as we do trust they'll end in true delights. Let us celebrate! Oh, it's so beautiful! I cry every time! Well, that is how our story ends, with four lovely couples united in wedded bliss, just like I said they would. As you go on about your day, remember to love one another, and don't be afraid to embrace your true self. Ta-ta for now!